you wake up, this is what you gotta do. You gotta crush the day before it crushes you. Every day I'm here to motivate, lead the way in the AM. I don't want you to hear these words, I need you to feel what I'm saying. Oh, no. you gotta crush the day before it crushes you. You gotta crush the day before it crushes you. In the building, Jimmy Wilson, motivation's coming, I can feel it. First thing that you need to do is crush the day before it crushes you. What is going on, Day Crushers? It's your boy, Drewby. We're back again. It is a Day Crusher interview. And these episodes are designed to switch it up and bring you the stories of the men and women who I've met on my journey and who I believe have an amazing story themselves who can share with you some of the struggles they've been through, but some of the ways they've been able to implement what they've learned on their journey and how they are out there crushing the day, just like you and I. And today's guest, I mean, I, I could go on for probably two, three hours telling stories with this guy. And if we weren't careful, we would definitely end up there. Uh, but this man has been a pivotal part of the last five years of my life in the sense that he and I have created a bond and a friendship that goes far, far beyond what most individuals will ever have in their life with people they spend decades being connected to. But today's guest is someone who I am truly honored and grateful to be doing life with just based on the fact that he focuses his entire day, every single day, not just on crushing it, but on helping every single person that he comes into contact with to go out and crush the day. So I need you guys to help me welcome my friend, Mr. Daniel Galvez. What's up, buddy? Thanks, man. Hey, you kind of cut out a little bit, so. Um, of course I did. Of I missed the drum roll moment. Internet. That's okay. I know it's there. I know it's there on that side. So thank you. Thank you, Drewby. That's, man, that's a, that's a huge compliment. And I didn't even realize, like, you look up and five years is gone just like that. And, you know, you look at every iteration and, you know, it's, it's funny because we were tagging up, you know, pictures of what we look like and it, we almost look like babies, you know, even though like I'm in my 40s and I'm like, dude, how is it possible to look like a baby from 42 to 47? And it is possible. Like you're like, holy smokes, I'm aged now. Like it's like like a good bourbon. And, you know, and same thing for you, too. Like you keep getting skinnier and skinnier and more fit. And I think you're you it's almost like you're waking up earlier then I remember, like, I know you've always consistently woken up before the chickens do. So, and it's funny because, like, the chickens, they don't they don't wake up. They wait for Drewby to wake them up. So that's how it goes. Hey, man, we got days to crush, brother. And, and one of the things, as you said, is our time flies just like this. <clears throat> and one of the things that really brought us together was that commitment to going all in and to really compressing time. As you said, that this five years has flown faster than probably any five years I can ever remember. And the aging process that we've gone through while we have both aged, I also like to think, as you said, it's kind of like a fine wine or a bourbon. We're developing character. And in that character, it's bringing out this internal greatness. And one thing I've really seen and, and had the pleasure of experiencing with you is how much growth can truly occur when you focus your time and energy on the things that matter, right? When you get intentional about what you're doing. So for those that don't know you, which is kind of crazy because everyone who listens to the show probably knows my friend, Danny Galvez, but... For those who don't know you, tell us a little bit about your journey on how you, you know, have had four and a half decades of, of growth and experience and, and what it's done to get you where you are today. You know, and yeah, it's been it's been an incredible journey. And one thing that there's a revelation that was made to me recently, and it just it's one of those things where you're sitting and you're you're reflecting in your day, maybe you have a break between a Zoom call or a client meeting, and you look up and go, Wow, that's a powerful revelation. And the revelation was this, is that we are continuously growing. We are continuously expanding. It's the law of the universe. There's no stopping. There's no days off. There's no vacations with it. Like whether you want to choose, so you might have time where you take a break, but you're still developing and learning something. And that's how I've looked at it. You know, even from childhood, 
you know, everything in my childhood, you know, being the eldest of five kids, living in a military family, having to live on less, right? There were times we had something called hot dog hash in my family. And we knew when hot dog hash came around, that meant, you know, things were getting tight. We had to make it stretch to payday. Um, we always had kids at my house. My my mother, my stepmom, she was she was babysitting kids. I even got certified so we could babysit more kids. Like if you had two people certified in CPR, you could babysit 10 kids. So the, those were foundational things. Not being able to be funded to go to college. I had to pay for college. I went to college a semester, dropped out because I'm like, I'm paying for this. And something in me said, hey, common sense, go do this a different way. You can do what you're doing, but do it differently. And the other thing was, I was thinking about the long term. And it's interesting. I started in psychology. And I was like, I'm never going to make a lot of money doing psychology. But yet today, the things that we do, a lot of it is based in psychology, right? The mindset. And I just took a different path. I went and became a DJ and I did very well. Thank God I went on a scholarship. That's one of those things, those affirmations from the universe saying, hey, listen, you're in alignment. You need to go. Here's the scholarship. What's your excuse now? And I did. And I, I created a career out of that. I went and I worked different jobs. I worked in you know, manufacturing, building overhead car washes, and I waited tables and did whatever I had to. I was a bartender. And then I became a karaoke host and an event host later on and just worked at radio stations and did side jobs just to make money. It didn't matter, right? It was, I was learning and developing and growing and I got to work in corporate environments, which was fantastic. By the time I hit mid thirties, I was working in a corporate environment and I'd worked with a lot of different people from different backgrounds and all of them were fantastic. And I look back and go, there's always those key pivotal people in your life along the way that have helped you. And one might be really organized. One might be just brilliant, visionary, creative, over the top. One might be a master executioner. Then you've got somebody that really pays attention to the details in fitness. They're physically fit. They do the research. They know what it takes to live a good life, drama-free life. You know, when I look back at that, that's the essence of what we're doing. That's, you reference collapsing time. And We've been able to do that because we're all different ages. We all keep growing together. We all keep pushing each other. And we also hold each other accountable too. And there's there's nothing better for, for group empowerment or community empowerment than doing that. And one does not know better than the other. It's like we need all pieces. Drew, you've helped me with so much stuff that I can't even begin to list. Holy smokes, I'm glad Drew's here. Drew's younger. Drewby pays attention to certain things that I don't catch. And it's been fantastic because I've been able to deploy those things and shorten my curve to learning and also still stay relevant as a human being. So thank you. I, I, I appreciate it. And it's funny because you're, you're talking about these experiences that we've had and, and this journey we've been on together. And it's so amazing because it's, I was in my own head being a meme lord, kind of laughing to myself, thinking about like Forrest Gump and Bubba when they're sitting in Vietnam and they're like leaned up against each other. It's like, you lean up against me and I'll lean up against you and we ain't got to sleep with our head in the mud. <laughs> and like, that's what I picture our time together as almost, man. Because when we came in, we had what we had. We didn't know a whole lot, but we knew we were here and we were committed to what we were doing. And we literally just said, all right, we're going to figure it out, man. Like, what kind of shrimp are we cooking today? What do we do? Like, where are we cleaning? And and we just kept showing up and kept doing the work and leaning in on each other to say, hey, this is where I'm at. Who do we know? Who can we plug in with? How do we create this relationship and, and serve our community so that we can be known as the guys that people can reach out to and be pointed in the right direction? Because I think both of us recognize that in the position we had gained, by being friendly and helping and serving others, we didn't have all the information. No. And a lot of individuals and, and especially some of my listeners, I know those of you who are out there and listen to this all the time, you probably go through those moments where you feel like, I don't, I don't have all the information. How am I going to get to that next level without the information? And, and Danny, I would love for you to talk about how you approach that feeling and that knowing of, Hey, I don't know everything but I'm in a community or I, I, I know there's people out there that I can build that relationship with. How do you approach that in your own life and overcome some of that almost like imposter syndrome, we might call it? Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the biggest thing. It's like, what's the thing that illuminates a room when you walk in? 
the light switch, right? You walk in and there's that one source of light that makes it brighter. And, you know, human beings, I think when we come in, like when I walk into a room and I had to learn this, and this goes back to my radio days because I, I had some of that imposter syndrome. And here I was 19 years old, having to talk to 45 year olds or 50 year olds that had successful businesses. What am I going to talk to them about? They've already raised kids. They've got kids in college. They've already managed to create more opportunity. Maybe they have employees or contractors. Um, they're probably married. They got a three car garage. They even have a lake house. What am what am I going to talk to this person about as a 19 year old still living with roommates, driving a basic car, right? Still cutting my teeth, still discovering my identity because, you know, the human brain's not fully developed until 25. So I'm still doing stupid things and drinking and being wild. So how do I do that? Like I learned quickly and it took me a little bit, but I had to walk in and meet as many people as possible and ask them more questions. And they used to tell us that in school. They're like, listen, when you walk into a room, always have five questions that you can ask anyone at any time, at any level. Like what's got you excited about life right now? What are you focused on right now that you're really wanting to get accomplished by the end of the year, right? If tomorrow your life was to be perfect, what would have to have happened for that to be the case, right? You, you start, you ask questions like that. And next thing you know, you start getting all kinds of information. This might be information you can use. This might be information, and if you're listening closely, this can be information that you can leverage with the other people that you ask those questions of in the network. And pretty soon you become the conduit, right? You become the person that is the go-to, the goat in the room. And I don't mean goat as in like the greatest of all time. You are the greatest at making those connections. You become, you become the plug essentially, or the light switch in the room, right? When people say, hey, you light up the room, you know why? Because I care enough to take the time to get to know what's motivating people. Why are they doing what they're doing? What pains do they have? What do they need? And then who do I know and how can I help them get those solutions to those challenges? That's that's a powerful message, Danny. That's it. That's very powerful. And I, I think what's so interesting about that is so many of us, kind of, I think, come from that scarcity growing up of not having all the things that we wanted in life. And and I know every single human being on the planet, in some form or fashion, had scarcity in their life, because it doesn't matter if you came from trust funds and had all the money in the world, there was still something that you had a desire for. Yeah. And what happens is we kind of get into that mentality of like, hey, if I'm going to be there, I need to get what's in it for me, what's in it for me, what's in it for me. And when you flip that switch and you start going, hey, what's in it for these people? How can I help them? What do they need? It, it's so crazy that it's a, it's a real woo-woo side of life. But man, the energy and the change and the dynamic is exponential. Because suddenly people go, well, man, that guy asked me a ton of questions. I don't really know anything about that guy. I got to... I got to go find him. I got to, you know, the immediately want to know more. There's intrigue there. But what's what's really important is they know you care. Yeah. And people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So when you showed and introduced me to that mentality of getting in the room and, and really just focusing on, hey, Drewby, I don't care that you're nervous to get out there and build videos and create this content. I don't care. You're going to go do it because that's what's going to serve the community. And the more you pour into them, the more they're going to want to pour into you. And I fought it and I resisted it. But ultimately, you pushed me over that edge and said, hey, man, you're jumping in the deep end, whether you like it or not. Let's go for it. And it's funny because we were chatting earlier about how I've created, you know, 100 plus episodes interviewing other Apex clients and helping them bring that sh to shine the light on them. Because as you and I both know, there's some amazing gems of human beings in our community. And all it takes is that one individual to shine a light and let their sparkle glimmer and bring something out of them that they didn't know existed. And so I want to thank you personally for doing that for me. Uh, but for the listener, maybe you could share a little bit on how they can find that energy in themselves and bring that light out to shine it on the, the gems in their community. No, that's great. That's a great question. And and thank you. You're welcome. And you know what? I got to tell you too, Drew, because like when I was coming in, like the proof of concept too lies within you. 
in in saying, hey, I think this will work. Like if I'm the greatest hype man or the greatest promoter ever, not that I am, I'm just saying like in radio, it's branding, it's marketing. You know, oftentimes I'd have to walk into a building not knowing anybody. Brand new show. Usually they push back on the brand new DJ because they're in love with the one that they had. Human beings like comfort. They like consistency and predictability. So whenever they remove the DJ, it was a hard job to get in the door and do that. And that's what I was like, well, this is what we're going to have to do when we come into Stuman's organization. And he's like, hey, we're going to launch Apex. We're going to take you to the top. All right, cool. What are the what are the concepts? What are the core values? What are we what are we looking at? What are we working with? Who do we need to continue to be? Like, obviously, you invited us here because we have the right things in place. But you know, as far as that, like the example with Drewby, and this was great too. Drewby was highly uncomfortable, and he did fight it. And there are a lot of times where he's just like, "Man, I don't want to do this." And and I was very persistent because I knew if you just got a taste of the sunshine of what's out there, you would know. Like, you don't have to do as much as you think you need to do when you do it together with someone else. And if you roll as a team and as a unit, and in some cases, like everybody's a specialist in the thing that they do. They all have super powers. Think of it as like a transformer, right? But none of it works without every single piece. So you might be great at connecting people. You might be great at writing. You might be great at, you know, negotiating contracts. You might be great at sales. Uh, you might be great at branding or marketing or whatever the case may be. You might be great at public speaking. You got to think of it like a band. So mm-hmm. like one thing I would say, definitely more opportunities. You need to shake as many hands as you can, meet as many people as you can, be open to conversations, release yourself of any expectation, but always be prepared to deliver something and always deliver more than what they expected. So what is that? It could be, mm-hmm. hey, listen, I've got something for you. Why don't you jump on the call? And what you're looking for is an opportunity to give them something that you've already acquired in your skill set, that you've already developed over the course of your life, a perspective, right? You're not trying to tell them what to do or sell them anything. The moment you try to do that, human beings are going to back up, but be ready for that. Ask them questions that get them thinking like, hey, why do you want to do that? Why is that so important? What happens if that doesn't happen? Um, The next thing is, take chances. You got to do some uncomfortable things. One thing I love about what you did, Drewby, and I didn't know this until after the fact, but you went out and hired Abby Walla to help you with public speaking, acting on film. Remember that? Like we had done, we had done, um, we were doing the hot nine at nine ish in the early days. And we basically did about 45 days of back to back episodes. It was every week, five days a week. And we would go live every single night for about an hour to an hour and a half. And, you know, At times, it was like very uncomfortable for Drewby to be on there. And what he did was he turned around and he took 500 bucks and he hired him somebody that can help him get more comfortable on video. And if you go back and watch some of those episodes, they're probably buried someplace inside of the Sales Talk with Sales Pros group. But if you go and watch them, you'll see the discomfort. Like they're like, oh, or those moments where you're like, I don't know what to say. Right. Um, and, And those happen for everybody. But those are, those are probably the best tips, you know, like creating those opportunities of excitement. People want to be included. They want to be heard. And all you have to do is create the platform Mm. or the stage. It could be a backyard, right? Around a barbecue. I know you like to smoke meat. You're very proud of your meat, Drew. We always see you posting pictures on it, but like become the host or the mayor of that party or that town. It could be something at the beach. It doesn't matter where it is. It's just a collective gathering and it's been written too. You take, and this, that, that analogy is so powerful for me, you know, where you can, you can take a horse and it can only drag so many pounds. You add two horses and it can drag almost five times the amount of weight that it could, that was the one horse could do by itself. So it, it's the same thing with human beings. We can move the needle a lot faster when we get together, empower, support, nothing's going to be perfect, but you don't put your foot on somebody's neck when they're down. You don't attack them when they go, man, I failed or I didn't deliver that properly. I didn't meet the expectations. I didn't hit the KPIs, key performance indicators. I didn't hit the goals for this month. I didn't make the metrics. No, you go in to find out, hey, how can I help you with that? I might be able to help you. And that right there, that's the key. That's how you empower your community. Danny, I absolutely love that, man. And I absolutely love you. And I'm so grateful that you took the time out of your day to be here and to share the wisdom that you did with our listeners. And more than anything, man, to just know that you are always right there 
in my back pocket. Anytime I need you, I can reach out to you day or night and you're going to respond because that is the kind of bond that can truly be built when two humans come together with the mindset and the mission to truly change lives. And I know for us, that has always been the case since day one, watching you riding around in that white McLaren, squawking that fucking chicken. Uh, (laughs) We have been having an absolute blast together and I'm excited for the continued journey. One thing I know for sure that you've really helped me do is to share my mission and my message with the world. And so for anyone who's listening, who wants to know more about how they can create a podcast or share their message, how can they find you? How can they connect with you? One million percent. You can follow me on Instagram, Danny Galvez to monumentalvoicemedia.com. You can find me there too. Um, You know, one suggestion I would have for you if you're watching this, join the Apex. You need to talk to Druby and have a discussion about joining Apex because none of that would be possible without joining Apex. You know, a few years ago, like the McLaren ride came because I made an investment of myself. I took the equivalent of a mortgage payment and bought something and about took my breath away. At the time I was married, I even asked permission too, because that's what you do when you're married and your wife, you know, is in control of things. But I, and out of respect, I mean, right. I mean, what's hers is yours. And, or supposedly it's supposed to go that way, but anyways, um, different conversation. Yeah. Different conversation. That's another show. Anyways. Um, I got to tell you, all of that stuff happened, me being able to step out, get on more stages, meet more people, make more connections. A lot of it came because my first invitation that I said yes to stepping out of my comfort zone. And I did like, I didn't just join the apex. I became the next iteration of what apex was to become. I got to help build it. And it's been a huge honor and it's been great to get to know you too, Drewby. Um, As a result, I have a business. I have other friends. I have things that keep developing brands, books, audiobooks, you name it, like the sky's the limit. So whatever it is you want to do, you can do it, but start, join the apex, have a conversation with Drew. Danny, I love you, man. I love you, brother. Thank you so much for your time. Those of you that are listening, make sure you tune in, make sure you subscribe to the show, share this with your friends and family. These interview episodes, I think are going to start bringing that next level of motivation and inspiration for you to go out and crush today before it crushes you. We'll see you guys on the next one. See ya. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to go back and check out all the previous episodes. Make sure you subscribe and share this podcast with other like-minded, success-driven individuals who want to crush it. Check the show notes and grab your Crushing the Day swag over at crushingtheday.com. And remember, crush the day before it crushes you. You gotta crush the day before it crushes you.